this is a tutorial on how to enhance your video footage. This video pretty much covers a few things that I do pretty consistently on all the videos that I that I edit to kind of bring out the most out of out of the film, out of the uh, whatever I'm I'm filming. I see a little too often uh, just just in my my personal observation when people are putting up their uh, reviews on the knife when they're putting up their flipping footage um, it tends to you know I, I could be mistaken and I, of course I don't I don't really know what people have as uh, editors so I don't really know their their capabilities but I knew of some people who, who use Vegas and other programs and uh, when I see the video it seems like they left most of their footage stock so they're using the editor um, in a good way in regard to you know sorting their footage and transitioning from uh, cut to cut, uh, you know, inserting pictures, slow-mo, stuff like that, but the editor that you use, depending on what you use, of course, um, this is Sony Vegas Platinum, um, the editor is capable of also enhancing the film itself, so this is why, why I'm making the video, because I think uh, if people kind of knew a few of the things I did uh, that I, I find very helpful, um, they'll maybe implement it and it'll, it'll help them out and these things are very simple so uh, we'll start with this footage here this is uh, basically your typical this is what we we see a lot in the flipping community um, kinda ever since uh, Vincent Dark started using uh, his um, black his customary black background we see a lot of people use a black backdrop or some type of colored backdrop for their flipping footage kinda makes it a nice clean backdrop so it kind of isolates the flipper and the knife and everything. Um, now this is the stock footage and as you can see around here uh, you can see all the wrinkles in the cloth that I'm using here. The light is hitting here all the shadows are coming through in the cloth and so uh, and also as you can see the cloth is not really a perfect black. When you use a, when you buy a black cloth or whatever it is that you're using for your backdrop it, it's not really a true black, it's, it's more of a, a very dark gray, especially when the light hits it, the light tends to reflect off it and then you, um, you know, you you kind of lose the whole effect of it being, uh, you know, like on this left side here, there's not as much light hitting it, so this is truly a, a black, this is the effect that people want. On the right side here, when the light is coming through the window, you see all this, um, kind of the, uh, the cloth reflecting the light back, so it's not really a true black. So the first thing that I like to do in um, any video is I'll hit the, hit the effects button. This is again, this is a uh, Sony Vegas, uh, all, all versions. I'll, let me close this so I can show you guys again. So this button right here, event effects. Uh, you can also right click it and you can go to um, video event effects. But the quickest way is just hitting this button right here and it'll, it will bring up this, uh, this menu. Um, this is a this is kind of the, let me just clarify real quick, when you hit this, this is assuming it has no effect, right, because once we put uh, an effect on, I'm, I'm sidetracking just a little bit, but once we put an effect on, hit this again, it's just going to go to your effects box here, okay, so if you already have an effect on there, what you're going to have to do is go to your video effects tab, go through whichever effect you want, and then just drag and drop into, you know, you can just click on it, drag it, and drop it right onto the footage. That's the easiest way. Uh, we're not going to be using these, so uh, actually we are going to use color balance, but not right now. So just uh, start from the, from the top again. We're uh, let's do it from here. Um, going to go to my video effects tab right here. If you don't see it, go to view and um, go to video effects, and it'll show up. See, right now it's gone. I'll go to view, video effects, and there it is. If you want to move it around, you can. Uh, first thing I always like to do with any footage that I have is brightness and contrast. And drop it right in here. Uh, most videos that I do benefit from this effect, like probably 99% of them. There's a few that actually don't need it, but um, your stock camera, depending on your, depending on the lens that you have, depending on the lighting set, setup that you have, um, if you're using, you know, maybe you're shooting in the day or whatever, this, um, this may play more of a part or less of a part, but I found that even under good lighting, brightness contrast um, always will help kind of balance out the way you intend 
the film to look. Now, first thing I like to do, um, this was shot in decent lighting. This was shot with uh, sunlight, but I will always just uh, mess with the contrast first. As you can see right now, if I increase the contrast a little bit, I get uh, immediately it takes away all that, all the light reflecting off the cloth. So that's kind of nice. But we do we are a little bit too dark here, so I like to turn um, turn up the brightness a little bit now. As you see, when I turn up the brightness, everything kind of comes out again. So if, to counteract that, I have to I have to turn up the uh, the contrast a little bit more. So basically, I like to kind of play around with this and um, kind of kind of find the right balance between the two. Uh, your contrast center here, as you can see, this kind of just balances out um, between these two a little bit more finely. So this is probably a level where I'd like to be because I wanted this entire thing to be truly black, and uh, it also kind of highlights the the flipper. In some cases, it can highlight the knife depending on how how it looks. Actually, and, and keep in mind, in some cases, uh, this can actually make the knife stand out less. This is the replicant prototype, and as you can see, um, without brightness contrast. If, uh, by the way, this little check checkbox. If you uncheck it, it'll show you what it looked like looked like originally with the effect off. And once you check it on again, it's with the effect on, so you can kind of compare the two. So, as you can see, with it. With no brightness and contrast, you can kind of see the knife a little bit better. This is a dark color scale on the on the replicant, so that's why when you actually put brightness and contrast on, you're actually blending it into the background a little bit more. So that might be a, a con in, in using it. So you kind of have to weigh it weigh it out, and, and again, you know, look at your footage, preview it, and and see how it's affecting it. Um, in this case, it's not too bad. Once the knife is in motion, I think it's enough for the viewer to to kind of get a good idea of what's going on. Uh, but as you can see, it just kind of makes everything a little bit more distinct. So that's the first, uh, the first thing. Let's take a look at this footage and see how it gets affected. The stock or, or the, the the video that you guys see on YouTube of the Mayhem review, this is all completely blacked out, and you just kind of, uh, I kind of draw all the focus onto the knife. So again, we'll go to our video effects and we'll drop in brightness and contrast. All right, and um, click on here to open up the brightness and contrast uh, control panel um, for this particular footage and uh, we'll see how this looks. Uh, brightness is okay so let's turn up the contrast a little bit and we might even want to darken it up a little bit or we could try to go a little bit brighter and see if you go too bright and too too much contrast this is, this is the effect you get you kind of get this glowing effect it kind of looks almost uh, um, a little too graphic -y. I don't really know what the best term is. It looks a little, it's just it looks a little just overexposed, kind of that gives you that burnt look. This is good for effect if maybe this is what you're looking for if you want kind of a dramatic effect on a particular part of your foot your footage, but for a knife review I, I wouldn't want that. I'd want something a little bit more uh, natural looking. So in this case I might actually turn the brightness down, contrast up a little bit, like maybe right to the point where you just lose the the background and then so so as you can see, that makes a huge difference. Here it is, stock. I just don't think there's enough distinction between the knife and the background. I want to really hone in on the audience's attention just on the knife. And once I do that, that's what you get. All right. Now, um, next thing I like to use is uh, color balance. Okay. So let's drop this. If you notice, um, well, you guys probably don't notice because you're not used to my lighting in my camera, but I can tell uh, as the reviewer of the knife, I know what this looks like under my lighting, and I can tell that the camera didn't quite capture the color correctly. Um, now, depending on your camera and your setup and everything, um, color balance may or may not play a role, but usually I find the color balance does help uh, bring the footage to look more like what it what appeared in real life. That is, of course, assuming that's your that's your intended goal. I like to get this as close looking to how I think it should look, you know, as if the viewer was seeing this in person. I think, um, and and typically what I found, this might just be specific to my camera, but if I turn down the the red a little bit, see, now you really get the true blue of the handles here, and then turn up the blue here. Um, and this is really what the mayhem looks like. It's a blue handle, you know, and this uh, knife is obviously more of a silver metal looking um, blade. Previously it was kinda 
had this orange tint and these handles look almost gray. That's in that's inaccurate because these are blue handles. So once I put the color balance on there, it fixes that. You can also you can do the highlights, the shadow. Shadow kind of does everything. Uh, highlights is a little bit more subtle. Midtones is usually I just keep it at midtones and it's and it's fine. You know if you if you don't know what any of these things do, the best thing is just to switch through them and see how they affect the film. You know that's really how I learned. I, I really couldn't explain to you the technicalities of everything, but um, just experiment with them and see what what you like. But right there, you can see that, that this is the f footage without brightness and contrast or color balance. Now you turn them on and instantly looks ten times better. Uh, third thing I like to do is uh, sharpening the footage. This will pretty much just bring out a little bit of detail in your in your video. Uh, probably can't see it too much now. By the way, if you lose if you lose um, if you can't see this, just click this arrow here. It'll it'll bring your all your effects over. So, uh, and if you want to tune any of these. Just click on any of these here, and it'll, that's how you adjust it. So this is uh, on a medium setting, you can and you can go all the way to max. You want to be careful with sharpen because if you're uploading to YouTube, uh, it's going to compress your footage a little bit, and the sharpening effect tends to make straight lines uh, or slightly angled lines look um, kind of pixelated. So if you overdo it, it will make your edges look kind of um, too like give that sawtooth effect, you know. So you want to be you want to be careful uh, because it does look, you know. I could turn it up here and and you, it really does. Right now it's hard to see, but when you turn it on and off, that's when you can really see the the difference. I, I I might be recording at a lower quality, so you guys might not be able to see it quite as clearly um, once this is uploaded to YouTube. But it does make quite a difference, especially when you're doing macro shots. If you're doing a flipping video, it doesn't doesn't matter that much. I I do notice it a bit. Uh, so I like to use it moderately if it's like a, a distant shot, but if you're up close on a knife, uh, this definitely helps a lot. So I like to use between a quarter of the way to half. I don't really like to exceed that because then things, you know, this is like the extreme of it. That's what happens. So you don't want that fuzziness. You want to just keep it just a little bit to enhance the, the look of the knife when you're up close uh, or your, your flipping footage. So those are the, the three things that I like to use to enhance um, enhance the look of my videos and I hope that you guys uh, find it find it useful as you can see once you kind of find your um, you kind of get used to this and you kind of get used to what your what your lens is doing uh, your camera is doing then this becomes pretty pretty easy and um, it's very fast it doesn't take a whole lot of time but it makes a huge impact uh, a few pointers when you are doing this but if you have a big, like this is the entire review here, right, of Mayhem. So don't, like, uh, don't edit your film, like cut it here and then cut it here and insert pictures and then cut it here again and do all this stuff and then go in uh, and, and do your brightness and contrast because what you're going to, brightness and contrast because what's going to happen is you're going to have to do it to every single one of these things, okay? And believe me, that's a humongous uh, pain in the neck, right? So do... Do it when it's all in one particular, uh, all in one, still in one one piece here. All right. Uh, another shortcut is if you have if you film under the same light conditions and you use the same camera and you know that there's one particular setting you just keep on using. Okay. Uh, what you can do is say you you know this is the setting you want. You can just say setting A. You know, name it whatever. Hit save. And when you go to your video effects, you're gonna see it here. So all you gotta do now is drag and drop your setting, and you don't have. It's just gonna do this every single time. All right. Uh, one third shortcut, and this is what I've been doing lately, is if you if you have all the same uh, film under the same lighting and everything, uh, you can. This is your video track, and as you can see, the video track as well can accept effects. So if you come here, or if you're in your video effects, you can dra drag and drop your video effects into your video track itself, and this will affect every single thing in your in your video track. Uh, the only reason why you um, when you wouldn't do that is if you have several bits of footage um, under different lighting conditions that get affected differently by this particular 
setting. But, you know, again, if you had like, this is the indoor shot and then you had like a, like an outdoor shot, I mean, you could just take your outdoor shot shots or, you know, different lighting shots in a different video track and just put the, the effect in that track for that particular footage and then keep all your indoor shots for, you know, other uh, footage under a different light, light setting or camera setting, whatever it is, in a different um, video track and just use the effects um, for that footage in that particular video track. That way, uh, no matter what you're dropping in, you don't have to, you don't have to do it to the, the cut itself. So those are two ways to kind of save some time because uh, when I first started learning, I, I edited and I had like a million different pieces. Then I realized I had to do the effects on every single one. And then um, I realized I could just do it in the video track. That saved a lot of time. I started saving my settings. That saved a lot of time. And I st started putting um, footage that was shot under different lighting or use a different camera or whatever in uh, different video tracks. So uh, definitely exp experiment with brightness and contrast, uh, your color balance, and your sharpen. Again, this is a Vegas Platinum, but these are very common uh, settings. You know, even I think Windows uh, Movie Maker has brightness and contrast. I don't know if it has color balance and, and uh, sharpen, but um, it's still, you know, these are almost every editor, to, to my knowledge, has these very basic uh, functions. So experiment with them, see what, what results it yields, and hopefully uh, you guys found this tutorial helpful and if you have any questions or comments leave them below and as always thanks for watching